Hi everyone, welcome back to Sonia's Prep and to another edition of Shabbat Meal Prep. We have a lot of good stuff on the menu today and I hope you guys enjoy. If you're new here, hi my name is Sonia and I'm so happy you tuned in. I hope you like what you see and consider subscribing. And today on the menu we're going to be having some chalte baksh and chalte swol, which is basically a meal that you prepare in a cloth bag. And I really liked how it came out last week, so I wanted to do it for you again this week. And I'm also going to be making oxtails. There will be a few salads, some dessert, and I hope you guys enjoy it. To start off, I'm going to be boiling my oxtails that I have already washed. I'm going to be placing that into a pot of water and waiting for that to boil. In the meantime, I'm setting up my station where I'm going to be cooking two meals at the same time. So I'm making something for baksh and khaltesvo. And I have prepared two cups of rice in each foil tray and adding in a handful of chopped meat. I'm using lamb here in this recipe. The oxtails have now boiled and I'm going to be rinsing all of that off, placing them back into the pot and adding in about two tablespoons of oil. You can season it any which way you'd like. I'm just going to be adding in some steak seasoning, some seasoning salt, onion powder, garlic powder and paprika. Once the oxtails have browned, I'm going to be placing in a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce with equal parts of water. I'm going to give that a good mix. I also like it just a little bit spicy and I'm going to be adding in some Frank's Red Hot Sauce and garbanzo beans. To make this dish a little bit more hearty, I add in a few potatoes that I have cut up into large chunks with about three to four cloves of garlic that I'm going to be slicing thinly. For depth of flavor, I love adding in a few bay leaves. After it comes to a boil, I mix everything really well and cover the lid and let it cook for a few hours. Now I'm back continuing making the green rice, the baksh. I'm slicing up some cilantro. I have three bunches of cilantro and one bunch of dill that I'm going to be slicing up very thinly and placing it into the foil tray. Into each tray that I have here, I'm going to be adding in one onion that I have sliced thinly. So we finished with the green rice and now I'm moving on to the chaltesvo. This is a meal that has been traditionally been eaten on Saturday for lunch. So it cooks all night long in a steamer or in a water bath and we eat it on Saturday lunchtime. And this time I wanted to make it in a steamer. This is my very first time doing it this way. I was a little bit hesitant, but it came out so, so well. I was so proud of myself and I wanted to share it with you. So in the tray, I have here two cups of rice, one onion, a handful of meat that I have chopped up. And I have a plum over here, a fresh, obviously plum, that I'm going to be slicing up into tiny cubes. The plum adds color to the dish and a nice flavor. I'm also going to be adding in half a cup of black raisins that I'm just going to be very slightly randomly slicing through some of the raisins just to bring out its sweetness. 
and I have half of a yellow apple here that I'm going to be peeling and slicing into tiny cubes as well. So like I said earlier in the video, these meals are made to be cooked in these linen cloth bags. So I just took mine, I very slightly washed it just so it could be damp and I squeezed all the water out and now it's ready for me to fill my meal with it. So I just very, very well mixed the meal. I mixed the green rice and I'm going to be mixing the khaltasvo as well and then placing it into the bag making sure that I really, really tightly um, push all of the food down into the back into each and every little crevice and corner, not leaving any space. The most traditional way of eating this meal is by placing the bag that you have wrapped very tightly into a pot of boiling water and have that cook for about three to four hours. I didn't want to have the chance of having my rice be a little bit on the mushy side because it would be floating in water so I decided to try and experiment and place the bag into a steamer so basically the bag would not be in touch with any water but in the air on top of a plate in a double boiler which I will be showing you later on. I was so pleasantly surprised with how this process worked. It came out beautifully. I didn't have to line the linen bag with any kind of plastic bag like some people do. Um, this way it's healthier. There's no toxins that are being released by the plastic bag and it just came out so well and I highly recommend it. Once the meal is placed into the bags, I take some twine and I very, very tightly try to wrap my bag. And every time I make another turn with the twine, I just try to place the twine underneath the twine before that. So I'm just trying to make it tighter and more tighter every time I go around with the twine. I give it a nice knot and proceed to roll the twine again over the bag just to make sure that it is really nice and tight and sealed really well. Now I'm going to be using the exact same method to wrap my bachs. Now I'm going to be making some roasted chicken legs. It's simply salt, pepper, and some garlic powder with some chili sauce right over it. Cook this uncovered at a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour. Now moving on to some Franks and Blinks. My kids love it and it's such a cute appetizer that everyone just likes to eat. It's very simple to make. I use puff pastry squares that I align the hot dogs with and I just 
portion them out to the right size that fits the puff pastry. I cut the hot dogs to fit that space and roll everything up. And now the tips of the hot dogs that were left from before, I just combined two pieces and rolled them in the puff pastry dough as well. When everything is rolled up, I egg wash everything and place some sesame seeds on top. Bake it at a 375 degree oven for 30 minutes. I'm going to be making some mini Biscoff cheesecakes. I had some Biscoff cream filling left over and I wanted to get rid of it and use it up in a cute dessert or a breakfast. So I had combined equal parts of the Biscoff cream and the cream cheese, mixed it very well, and I actually went on Pinterest to look up cute ways to be able to fold up the puff pastry squares with the filling inside, and this is what I found. So you basically slice the two sides on the right and the left completely through, and the tops and the bottoms, the middle part, you just leave not slice through and you'll see what I mean here so I am able to pinch the two ends closed and the bottom two ends closed as well and it looks like a beautiful little flower I thought it was really cute and it looks so presentable and I'm gonna show you another way of how I do it a different angle So you put a teaspoon of the filling inside, use the right and the left corners, pinch them together into the center, and do the same thing on the bottom. And once I'm done folding all of these as well, I egg wash them and place them in an oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. This is the double boiler where my meals will be cooked. I take the plate, flip it upside down, and wait for the water to boil. Once, while I'm waiting for the water to boil, here is the veal that I had marinated earlier. And I'm going to be placing that into a 400 degree oven for about three hours. Now it's salad time. I find it easier if I chop up all of my ve vegetables in one shot and then dress them. So here I have my purple cabbage salad with some different colored peppers and cucumbers. I have my pickled cucumber salad with some red onion and raw beets and raw carrots that I have shredded. Now I'm just going to be chopping up some greens so that I can make everything look a little bit prettier because it's nicer with greens. So I have some dill, some cilantro, and some scallions that I'm going to be finely chopping and adding it into the raw beets and carrot salad as well as the purple cabbage salad.
to the salads here i'm going to be mincing two garlic cloves and placing that directly on the top and seasoning it all with some salt and pepper about a teaspoon of sugar into each salad which can totally be replaced with some honey and I also add in about a tablespoon or two of vinegar and I'm going to be heating up about five to six tablespoons of avocado oil and heating that up really well and placing that directly onto the garlic in the raw beet and carrot salad as well as the purple cabbage salad it just provides a really nice depth of flavor and it just smells amazing when you do that i'm gonna give everything a very very good mix and the salads are done the mini biscoff cheesecakes are now done and i just love to put some powdered sugar over it to make them look a little bit more gorgeous Here is how the oxtails have turned out. I've been cooking them for a few hours. I place them on a nice serving dish and sprinkle some greens to make it have a little bit of a wow factor. And the meat was just incredibly soft and falling off the bone. The franks and blinks are now all done as well and they look really nice and cute. The salads have all been mixed and are ready to be eaten for Shabbat. Halfway through the cooking process for the Bach and the Chaltzvo, I flip over each of them. So after an hour and a half to two hours of cooking on one side, I take my tongs and I flip the bags over and I let it cook for an additional hour and a half to two hours. If anyone is interested in the bags that I have used or even in the steamer that I'm using, I'll have some links down below that you can check out if you're interested. Here is what the Chaltesvo looks like when it's all nice and done. I took these pictures on a Sunday that we had some leftovers with and this is how the Chaltebach turns out. They come out super great, they're not mushy, the rice is perfect and individualized and I hope you guys like it and give this a try. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's it for this week's Shabbat meal prep. I hope you guys really liked it. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. I would love to have you as a viewer. If you made anything that I made here today, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see it. Until next time, bye.